In this tutorial, we will be making some techwear inspired casual wear, drafting a lot of this directly from scratch, and also using some existing free assets in Marvelous Designer. So let's get started. First, we start off with our avatar in the 3D window, and we are going to be using the shadow of the avatar in the 2D window as a reference for our pattern making. So using the polygon tool, we are going to create the beginning of our shirt pattern here. So using the segment point tool and then holding control to make curve points while we're drafting, we are going to extend the shoulder a little bit longer than you would want because this is going to be a drop shoulder. And then the same with around the sides of the shadow because we do need to accommodate for the circumference of the torso. I want this to be an A-line shirt, so I am making it not square, which is fine. Finishing it up, ideally they would be square, but if they're not, that's fine so long as they flow well. Using the edit curvature tool, I am adjusting the sleeve shape because it is cutting far too deep in the front. We are then going to be making a curved hem here. Using the curve point tool or the V hotkey to add curve points, I am then just going to add those curves in and adjust its shape, clean it up a little bit to make sure that all my corners are as square as possible for now. I can then adjust it later. Fixing the neckline and then unfolding with right click symmetrical editing. Next we make the back with a copy of the front, so control C and then control V. Here I am going to be checking my sleeve. So when you are working on a sleeve, you do want your sleeve to be about the shape of a wine glass or the shape of a, let's just say like an eggplant. It's a good visual indicator for how a sleeve or armhole should flow into itself. For the back sleeve, it is almost always a little bit closer to the edge, as you can see as what I'm doing here. So it's a little odd shaped wine glass. That's why we sometimes use an eggplant as an example. And here I'm just lining it up to make sure that they also flow into each other really nicely. This is important when you're creating a piece from scratch. You can also check it by perfectly lining up your side seams, which I've done here, and it still looks pretty good. Now that I'm happy enough with it, let's go ahead and place this on the avatar so we can start making the sleeves. So I'm using uh, the arrangement points tool. So shift F is the hotkey for this. And moving over to the 3D window, I'm just selecting the front shirt and placing it on the front arrangement point of our avatar. And same with the back. Turning off the arrangement points with shift F, and then I'm going to be sewing with the segment sewing tool or the N hotkey just the shoulders and then the sides because I do need to start making the sleeves next. And simulating so I can see how it fits, see if I need to make any adjustments. I see a little ripple in that uh, front neck there, so that's gonna need to get fixed and then I'm just kind of adjusting that back. I'm just pulling it over aside because I know the sleeves are gonna pull the neck away from the neck. I can see that the armhole is a lot lower than I want for this first layer shirt, so I am going to just be raising that armhole and then adjusting for that change. Just raising it by selecting those segment points. And then because I made a change to those segment points, I'm just gonna be going and cleaning that up a little bit. Again, I just want my sleeves to sew into each other or like that seam to flow really nicely. Doing a quick check of my side seam. Ideally, I want it to be perfectly perpendicular to the ground. This is a copy of the front and the back, but sometimes it might lay strange, especially depending on your avatar. So that's why I'm checking. Next, I'm gonna be making the sleeves. So I'm starting off with a rectangle. I made my rectangle here. What I'm gonna be doing next is measuring my line lengths so that it sews exactly into the line length just to start. So I'm gonna take a look at this with the rectangle. It's not gonna be a rectangle for long. Okay, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger than I thought. That means it's gonna be a very high curved sleeve. So I'm just lowering this piece here using the V hotkey to add curve points. It's gonna have that S shape, so it's actually gonna end up having a large sleeve cap. So that upper portion of that curve is called the sleeve cap and it's accommodating the shoulder. I'll show you using the arrangement points. Again, using Shift F here. I'm just placing this on his arm and I'm gonna show you how to do this. You can do this uh, by drawing it, by just using the rectangle and superimposing it over. But you can see here why I've done this. So it's going to accommodate the curve of the shoulder here and then it's gonna go under his sleeve. And that's why it has that odd shape. And that's important because when we move, we need space for that shoulder joint to adjust. So again, I'm just measuring those lines and comparing them. It's never going to be perfect. Generally, the sleeve is gonna be a little bit longer and have the ease in the uh, upper portion of the sleeve cap here. So it's that higher curve. 
that lowest line is going to be where um, the underarm is. So I'm just adjusting the shape here. Here is, I have too much space in the underarm, so I need to add more of the space in the upper portion of that shoulder, just like that. Now this shape's gonna change a lot, but I'm at least getting the exact line lengths in, which is important just so I can kind of see how it's uh, gonna lay when I just apply it into the shirt here. I have the front and the back of my sleeve pretty much made. I'm just gonna make some adjustments really quick. So let's go ahead and sew it in. So I'm just using the segment sewing tool or the N hotkey and just sewing it into the front and the back, making sure that my notches are going in the same direction and placing it using the arrangement points again, which is the shift F hotkey and just sewing it and seeing how that lays. You can already see here that the lower sleeve there is way too big, so I'm just gonna go ahead and taper that. And you can see here it's starting to look a little bit more like a real sleeve pattern. It's a little bit cattywampus, but we're gonna fix that in a minute. What I'm looking at here is to see how it's laying on him. It, uh, it's okay, I definitely need some bit, a little bit of cleanup. Uh, the sleeve cap here definitely needs to be higher. You can see here that it's actually going to lower it on his arm as soon as I increase the height of that sleeve cap. It's got that little point there. We're going to be solving that in a minute. I don't think that's coming from the sleeve. I think that's coming from the shoulder. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit just so I can keep pulling it away from the chest, which is where that lower curve is going to be. You can see how it pulled that in. It's looking okay. So I think I'm going to go ahead and move on with this, make this the uh, sleeve for both sides. Selecting uh, the sleeve and hitting Control C, Control D for duplicate and with symmetrical editing. So you can see here those points are consistent with both sides. And yep, I can see it's definitely that shoulder pattern. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm using the edit tool and I'm selecting one of those pattern pieces, rotate parallel to. I'm selecting that shoulder line and I want to make these two shoulders parallel. It's fine if it flips around. Um, I can just rotate it because they'll end up being parallel and I'm placing them on top of each other. You can see here, there is where my point is coming from. I also have one on that uh, neckline. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this. And that's how I'm cleaning up that edge. And it makes it flow nicely. There's still a little bit of a point, but it's a lot less noticeable as you can see. And we're cleaning that line. And this is also why I always say to make it a 90 degree angle or a square on your seams. But really the whole point is to make your seams flow really nicely into each other. This does change the sleeve length, but again, the sleeves are fine being a little bit bigger than the actual armhole that they're sewing into. Now that that's done, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of pull at it and then make the sleeve cuffs, making them a little bit smaller than the actual length of that sleeve, just so I can get that puff. Selecting the sleeve cuffs and choosing superimpose side. And I'm just adjusting it. So I have my basic shape of my sleeve here and my whole kind of shirts almost fit. I want the back to be a little bit lower for that curve line because this is kind of like a corduroy sweater is how it's going to end up looking and then just kind of pulling at it to see how I like the fit and I definitely need to fix this back. The back needs to be a little bit higher so it'll rest on the shoulders properly. Again, making sure it's nice and curved, keeping that a squared line if I can. Making some final cleanups with that front line, I am going to be removing the symmetrical or linked editing. And then I will be using the internal polygon tool to create internal lines and shapes for my design lines. Then I'm gonna be creating a line here. I'm gonna be doing some color blocking and adding some pockets. So I'm just gonna create a straight line across. And then I'm creating my pocket outline here. So I'm just making a sweater pocket. And I am just gonna duplicate this across that same line. Just control C, control R in this case. And I just wanna see where they're laying. So that's what I'm uh, fiddling around with here and then cut and sew on those lines because my design lines are the exact same as my uh, cut lines here. And then I'm cutting this upper neck portion here. I am gonna be making this kind of a button placket. So I am just cutting a 12.5 millimeter on each side of that center line, which ends up being a one inch cut. I'm keeping that internal line there so I can actually just sew it in place and keep it in place before I put my uh, buttons on it. Here, I'm just gonna create a second layer so I'm layer cloning over, making sure that it's laying on top of it. Then I'm going to delete the sewing relationship for that layer clone. And I'm gonna be sewing these plackets how I would sew them. So one goes to the left side, one goes to the right side, and I can then sew these into place so it's nice and neat. So here I'm using the trace tool or the I hotkey to trace 
those internal lines as a pocket. I'm now symmetrically linking those lower pieces because it'll uh, make my work a little bit faster. Sewing the pockets on with the segment sewing tool again and the free sewing tool for that center line. And right click them choosing superimpose over and simulating and then I can look at my pockets in the 3D window. Now that I've finished most of the design for the body of the shirt, I do need to make the hood because I do want to have a hood underneath my jacket. So I am going to be using my edit line tool to measure my line length of half of the neckline here. And I'm going to be creating a square of that same line length, similar to how I made those sleeves. In fact, this is going to be very similar. I'm going to be using the arrangement points tool. And in this case, I will be using the line pattern tool to draw on it in the 3D space, like I talked about a little bit earlier. Place it on the arrangement point, and then I will be using the 3D line tool to draw that curve where it is kind of colliding with his shoulder. And then I will just be selecting it with the edit tool at the end and right clicking and choosing convert to internal shape instead of trace. So I'm drawing it here, right click and convert. And then I can right click that internal line, choose cut and delete that lower piece. Now that that is in place, I can start making changes to it and cleaning up that line. Again, it's going to be wrapping around and I do ideally want it to be perpendicular. So I'm just adjusting that shape kind of freehand in this case. Using the free sewing tool or the M hotkey, I am holding shift to select the multiple pattern pieces that make up the shirt neck. And then I will be creating a symmetrically linked duplicate of this upper hood piece so that I don't have to do it a second time. Using the curve point tool to turn that back corner into a curved line. Now that that is curved, I'm sewing it into place using the segment sewing tool. And then I will continue to make some changes and then make some fixes using the B or the edit sewing tool hotkey and just making sure that those lines connect. Looks like it's sewing okay. I did not symmetrically link those front pieces there. If I use control H, I can kind of get a little bit of a better read. It's, it's leaning into his neck. I will be using the fold arrangement tool to kind of fold it out so it is standing perpendicular on his neck. You can also use this same option with the line tool by selecting the line. But for this piece, I do just want it to lay flat on his back because it will have a collar going over it. So I'm just going to be using this tool and editing that line angle to have it lay as flat as I can. Now that we have the basic shapes and silhouette of this garment down, we are going to be moving on to the smaller details like buttons, top stitching, and fabrics. Starting with the buttons. Using the button tool, I'm just placing it on the lower of the two plackets and then using the edit tool and I'm going to copy paste and then right click. And then I can check my intervals and select how many buttons I want. I do want to add uh, a little bit, oh, like one more button, I think. And so I need to reduce the uh, intervals, a measurement between them. And then I just select OK. Remove the layered linking and then apply symmetrical linking to those layered plackets. Using the edit button tool, I select all of the buttons, right click and choose duplicate as buttonhole to symmetrical pattern. Then using the fasten tool, I'm just fastening it. Now remember, it's not really gonna do much because they are already sewn together. So I'm gonna delete that sewing. I'm not going to have the upper two buttons buttoned. So I will use the fasten tool and select the top two buttons again, removing the fastening. It's on the back side, that's fine. I can just right click this button and reset the 3D position and then just fix it. Sometimes this happens with buttons. Sometimes it's a little easier to simulate them first with the sewing still in place, but it's an easy fix. Next with the segment top stitching tool, we will be applying the top stitching. Top stitching and buttons are the last things you generally wanna do while working in Marvelous Designer because they do slow down your simulation. With all the top stitching, we're going to be placing them where they would be in real life, such as on the plackets, pockets, and a lot of the major seams, and including on the hems. For the hem, I do need to change the top stitching, so I'm going to my top stitch tab. I'm making a copy of the top stitching I was using, and I do need to make it a bit deeper of a top stitch. So I am going to change the offset of that top stitch to 
6.0 millimeters instead of 3.2. For that deeper top stitch, I will just be using that on the hem, so I'm going to be using the free sewing top stitch tool to apply that to the hem. And to the armholes. Once that is done, I'm going to go up to the top stitch toolbar and select the color option in the properties and select a contrast color. So I'm going to pick orange and apply that to both of those top stitches. Selecting OK and making sure that they're all orange and the texture is correct. So let's take a look at them. Here are all my top stitching that are currently in place. Once they're in place, let's go ahead and select the buttonholes. These buttonholes are not going to be orange. They are going to be a darker gray to match the fabric that we're going to be picking next. So I'm just going to choose a dark gray and that finishes it for the smaller details. And once that's in place, I do want to get my library back open. And so I'm going to go to the fabric tab in the library. And this one I do know it's going to be an interesting corduroy sweatshirt here. So I'm just typing in cord. I've got my whale corduroy here and I'm just going to drop that in the fabric window and select all and I am going to apply this to all of them first. Delete that unused fabric one. So now it's all corduroy so it's got that cool texture that I like on there and I'm going to make this all that gray. And then making a copy and I'm going to have another color of gray. So this one's going to be a little bit darker just so I have that color blocking just so I can see my design simply and place those colors on my pieces. So you can place fabric in the 3D window or in the 2D window, depending on your preference, just drag and drop. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it into the places that I think would look good. So I'm going to put it in the hood and the sleeves and on the other side of the pocket. I changed the color a little bit, um, but we don't really need to see that. And make sure to turn on thick textured surface so you can actually see the thickness of your material. The last thing that needs color is the buttons. So I'm going to the button tab, selecting the buttons that are in the space, going to the color and going to a dark gray again. I don't personally like the pure black buttons. And then I'm going to the fabric mat or the type here and I'm choosing plastic. So I get that reflective look. I realized I needed to apply a double sided top stitch facing to the configure option. It's going to say face. I've saved this as both a garment and a project file. I am now saving this also as a new project file because I'm turning all of this into a jacket. So again, saving this file just with the name jacket in the same folder. And then I'm going to be doing a bunch of cleanup. So I'm gonna be removing all of those pockets. I'm turning the hood into a standing collar. So I'm gonna be taking those lines, right clicking and choosing offset as an internal line, and then choosing 50 millimeters cutting this and then deleting the upper portion of that hood. So now I have the base of my collar. Now I'm just going to be doing cleanup. So it's going back to the almost original piece that it was removing all of the details and just making it a simple two piece front shirt. I'm going to be widening my side seams. So I'm just making it slightly bigger. You can get away with it without being too large. As you can see here, I'm strengthening the collar because I do need it to stand up and changing that fold angle. Removing these curved hems, it's gonna be kind of like a bomber jacket, so I'm just gonna be removing all of those pieces, making it relatively square. It's a pretty simple pattern. So we're gonna speed through this pretty quick. I'm just shortening the hem here because I'm gonna be adding that waistband, widening these sleeves again to accommodate for the garment that's going underneath it, and then adding that waistband there sewing it in place using the segment sewing tool and holding shift to sew multiple pieces into one using M to N sewing and just kind of fitting it as I go. Um, my collar seems to have something going on with it. I don't like how it's standing. I think I just need to lower it. Uh, yeah, I need to lower this. So I'm just lowering this, adjusting my curve lines here, just so it's going to stand up a little bit straighter. It doesn't have to be perfect. There is a hood that's going to be going over top of this after all. I do have my sewing lines to fix. I can see a little kind of uh, wrinkle there. So I do need to fix that uh, using the edit sewing tool. And there it goes. Just kind of pulling at it and seeing uh, until I like it. Cause this is kind of all from scratch and draped on him. So I think I'm fine with the fit. 
Uh, let's see. I think let's go ahead and start with the pockets next. Uh, after, oh, I do need to clean up my sleeve here. So again, I'm just adjusting the sleeve. This is going to become a lot simpler than the previous one. Again, the fit is much looser, so I can get away with a much looser fit. Next, I'm going to be making those pockets. So I'm using the internal polygon tool to make a little rectangle. And I'm just going to make it an angled pocket. I'll have one on the top as a breast pocket, and then I'll have two on the bottom. So I'm just going to move it in place, kind of referencing how I like it in the 3D window, and then copying and pasting it a little bit lower. Again, moving it until I'm happy with its location. And then I am going to kind of shift it about, copy those lower pockets as patterns. Again, symmetrically link those, and then just sew them on top. So these aren't really real pockets, but they are uh, fake pockets with a little pocket flap there. And then I am turning the upper pocket into a hole, and then I'm gonna measure that line. My base generic zippers are gonna be 0.5 millimeters, so times two should be 10, so I do wanna make sure that's 10 millimeters. Removing linked editing to remove the second hole on the other side, then using the zipper tool, and in Marvelous Designer 11, you can use the zipper tool in the 2D window. When you're applying it, make sure to go the same direction and double click to finish each side. So you can see I've applied my zipper and I do wanna change how that pole is hanging cause that's not how it would hang in real life. So I'm just gonna select the zipper pole here. You can select a lot of the portions here. I'm just rotating it so it looks a little bit more realistic. And then I'm gonna make the zipper and the poles all kind of a dark gray. But going to my fabric, this isn't also gonna be corduroy so I am just gonna go ahead and select uh, I think with the nylon, I might do one of the nylons. At the very least, I'll have a different kind of texture here. This one's going to be a light, light gray or a white almost. I'm just going to apply it to all of it, and then I can apply any contrasting after this. For this collar, I do want to add a uh, bonding, which in real life would be like interfacing. A collar like that that stands would have some sort of material that keeps it a little bit stiffer. Then we're gonna be putting my contrast colors. I do want a little bit of contrast on the sleeves. And since it's basically got most of the design lines already, I'm just adding them to the collar here. Gotta pick the right one. The reason I'm putting the top stitching in these places is because both fun contrast colors, as well as it's generally used to keep the material from rolling and keep the pieces in the shape they should be. For this little pocket tab here, I do need to make a copy of the top stitch and make the offset one millimeter instead of the three millimeter to turn it into an edge stitch. Using the edit textures tool, I am just adjusting the direction of the grain of the fabric, or in this case, the print of the direction of the corduroy so that I can get the small lines going across the long portion of the piece. So I get that nice look. Now that that's in place, I do wanna add a zipper. As you can see here, I can't do the zipper on multiple pieces in the 3, 2D window, so I'm going to do that in the 3D window. Again, same thing, going in the same direction, just double click to finish, making sure that they're the same length. And here I'm going to do the same thing, make all my materials the same or as close as the same color and material as I can. And there's the beginning of my jacket. This got a little twisted, so I'm just going to right click superimpose over again, and that fixes that pocket. And I'm just going to kind of unzip the zipper. I'm just pulling it all the way down without simulating. And then I'm going to unfasten the zipper because the garment's going to be underneath it that we just made earlier. And I don't think I like the nylon featherweight, so I'm going to cho choose the nylon mats. I like that one. I think it has a little bit of a different texture. And I'm just going to copy the color as close as I can. And then just select them all that I want. You can select all of them or you can deselect the ones that you don't want to choose and just apply and delete unused materials. So I have a little bit of a heathered texture now, which is what I like. And it has that matching top stitching. Next, save it as both a file and a garment. So garment fat pack and a project file. That finishes it for both the top and the jacket. The jacket was much faster because we already had most of it done because we had made the top already. Next, we're gonna work on those pants. Next is the last garment in this project, which is going to be the pants. We are going to be making some kind of tech wear sweatpants. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We are again using the same avatar, but we are gonna be using a basic pair of pants that comes with Marvelous Designer 11 going to my garment folder and selecting my pants and choosing add to workspace. And then we are going to be editing these pants. So 
Once your pants are in your workspace, I'm selecting my waistlines. So here I'm adjusting the waistband. I'm just making a um, 50 millimeter waistband again, and I'm gonna be merging them across the sewn lines to create one single waistband. So I will, so I will right click the internal lines and select cut and sew. Using the edit sewing tool, right clicking and choosing merge across that sewing line, then merging across the center front line of the waistband to create one single waistband pattern. And then just rotating it so that the center front is the perpendicular or straight up and down line. The center front, where I've merged them together is creating a bit of a V-shape, so I'm gonna clean up this pattern a little bit before I go on to the next step. Next, I am removing the linked editing across that center front line. Then I'm going to clean up the center front, removing those segment points, so I can select all of the upper and lower segment lines and choose offset as internal line along a curve. And I'm going to choose two lines to get the sweatpants look or elasticized look. Once you've created your internal lines, you can then choose right click and layer clone over and then remove the linked editing for that upper layer clone. Going to the simulation properties for that pattern piece, selecting shrinkage, weft and warp and making that 120%. So that's left and right. And the reason we do this is so that we don't have to worry about too much pattern manipulation. I already know that the waistband fits and I still get the look of having an elasticized waistband without having to do too much actual pattern changing. So I'm gonna make this five particle distance and then I'm going to end up adding an elastic value to the top to get a lot more of those wrinkles that I wanted. Then I will add um, an elastic value, but a lot less than I would normally do just so I can get those wrinkles. Making this five particle distance, you can see it. So I'm making the upper piece have an elastic value just so I can keep it in place. Once you are happy with how your waistband looks, go ahead and freeze it by right clicking and choosing freeze or hitting control K. Going down to the torso, going down to the body of the pants pattern here, I am just going to merge the front and back pattern pieces to simplify this pattern because I am going to be making this an elasticized waistband. It's gonna be baggy, so it's going to be fine. I like how it's laying, but I do want my uh, the rise, which is kind of the crotch size to be lower. So I'm just lowering that. And I do want to remember where my side seam actually was. So I'm just going to create a vertical line there. This line I'm going to be using to place all my pockets and my webbing onto to keep everything relatively neat. Next, I am going to start drawing on my pockets and my design lines onto my pair of pants. So I'm going to be drawing the outline of my pocket. It's going to be a very simple patch pocket with a kind of curved bottom, keeping an eye on where the center front is because that will make the pocket warp based on how the center front line is shaped. Cleaning up my center front again, just so I have everything lay nice and flat. Then I am going to select the whole pattern with the transform pattern tool and just lengthen it horizontally so it's wider and it will be gathered like a sweatpant would be. So now it's going to be baggy. You can see the wrinkles here. It's still 20 particle distance, which is fine. And so now I can move that line and make the hem of the bottom here a curve. Using the internal rectangle tool, I am going to create the outlines for my patch pocket and my pocket flap. Once they're in place, I do need to rotate them using the transform tool and make them parallel to that center line that I drew earlier. You could use the right click parallel to option or you can just do it manually as I'm doing here. So now that I've got them in place, I am just gonna select those internal pieces and choose clone as pattern. Using the segment sewing tool, I am sewing the pocket flap to that top line of the original square it was from. So with this patch pocket, I am offsetting the external line or the outline checking create internal line and making it a 12.5 millimeter offset which is about a half an inch and i am going to again do the same thing that i did with the collar and make it perpendicular from where it's sewing into using the fold arrangement tool i can visually check to see which percentage works for me and then i can then apply that number to all of the internal lines in this case i'm going to use 90. once that's done i'm using the sewing tool to sew it to itself and sew it to that square that we made. Once they're sewn onto the pant itself, I am then going to use Control H to strengthen the pocket itself because it does have a shape, and then select both pattern pieces and choose Superimpose Over. Because they're symmetrically linked, I'm just going to basically copy these at the end and then paste them on the other side. Again, using Control C, Control D to make symmetrically linked 
pieces for those pockets. In this case, I'm not using the superimpose option. I'm just going to pull it as close as I can to the pant because they're already in the exact layer and shape that I need. So I'm just getting it as close as I can, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit simulate or spacebar. Next on to the hem cuff for the leg here. I'm just creating some rectangles. They're definitely going to be changing. You can just apply them using arrangement points or right click superimpose side. Sometimes it doesn't work. As you can see here, it's having a little bit of an issue. So I'm playing around with both of the options. With these patterns here, I have made them 120% uh, on the weft and the warp just to get the fit a little bit better around that leg. They are 20 particle distance, so that is what's causing the uh, collision looking issues. It's because I don't want to go down to five particle distance if I can avoid it until I'm done. So I'm getting as close as I can to the legs here, and then I'm just going to kind of fiddle with it, as you can see here, until I like how it fits. You can use the weft and warp percentage differences to get the fit correct but it doesn't affect the pattern, so it doesn't affect your UVs at the end of this, which is why I tend to recommend avoiding this if you can, but it does help you get a fit once it's on there. And then you can then make changes afterwards. While we're here, I don't like the shoes, so I'm going to go to the library, avatar, shoes, and select a pair of black shoes. And now that's in place, I am going to be adding the last internal lines, which are going to be some straps holding another strap in place so I can create some more wrinkles. I'm doing this first so that I can place my strap underneath these and I know exactly where it's going to be and I can account for it in my pattern. And then I know that there's a strap going straight through it so I'm going to choose um, split line, split it into three pieces so I have the center piece open for the line to thread through for all of these pieces, so upper and lower portions of these rectangle pieces. Once that's done, I will then select those internal lines because they have all of the points that I need for my pattern as well. Select them both and right click and choose clone as pattern. And then segment sew all of those line segments to each other except for that centerpiece. Remember that line is so that I have that strap next that I can sew directly onto that line, which is why we've left that center space. And then we are just going to select those two pattern pieces in the 3D window and choose superimpose over. Once that's done, we can do the same to the other side and choose control D. And last but not least, I'm going to make that, that strap here. Just the start of it. It's not going to be perfect. There we go. It's going to be a little bit longer. And I'm going to rotate it to make it parallel to that line. Just kind of freehand sew it to that upper portion. And then I'm going to make that an internal line in the center of it using the offset between those two parallel lines like I did with the curve, but you can do it with the straight line too. And I'm going to free sew it because I'm not measuring this. Just sewing it directly to that line to keep it in place and then superimpose over in the 3D window and then place the straps over it and let it settle itself. It's all still 20 particles in, so it's going to be a little bit chunky. But see, it's a lot easier to do it this way than it would be if I was to try to place it myself. And I can then do the same thing with superimpose over and then pull out those pieces. And simulate so I have my straps all floaty. In real life, if this was actually like real tech wear, you would, have, you would have these straps in place so you can create wrinkles. In this case, I'm going to be using the negative pressure, as you can see here, to pull it up on the pants and simulate those wrinkles that I want. Again, this is just a simple patch pocket, so I'm just going to place it on top using the free sewing tool, and then I'm going to make a symmetrically linked clone. And I end up just kind of removing those wrinkles. I want to do them while he's posed, because you'll end up seeing the tension wrinkles, and you'll get a bit of a different look once you actually pose your avatar. In this case, he's going to be in a running pose at the end of this, so... I'm going to go ahead and leave it as it is. Right now we're on the default material, so let's go ahead and add different fabrics next. Again, bringing my library window back up, I like to just use that refresh button in the bottom right hand corner. Again, going to my fabric, I wanted this one to be a kind of it's going to be a fleece but in my mind it's going to be a bonded fleece with a layer of 
Gore-Tex on top, let's just say. So I brought fleece into my workspace. I'm just going to be applying that to my material again. And I do also want the contrasting for my strap. I'm going to have that be, I think, a nylon webbing. I'm going to make it look like webbing. So it's going to be a nylon canvas. Again, it's going to be that orange that we've been using as the contrast. So putting that on... Those strap pieces. And then these pants are going to be a dark gray again, just because everything's going to be gray and orange today. You can obviously do whatever colors you want. I'm choosing gray and orange. So next would be top stitching, but I already have the other pieces of the top stitching on the garments, and I don't have that in my new file because it is a brand new file. I haven't made any manipulations. If I want those exact top stitching files, what I can do is just bring in a garment making sure to select add not open once you bring it in make sure to move it out of the way and i'm making the entire upper piece it's not going to be tucked in it is going to be a layer one so that it'll pop out over the pants to make an upper layer pop out easier from a lower layer i am just going to freeze the lower layer and then simulate just the upper layer now that I have my garment in place, I can actually just use all those same top stitching files. So I'm going to go ahead and place them on all of the pockets, all of those straps that are going to be black, not on the orange strap, just so that they're all cohesive. We're mostly there. Now that that is done, I kind of just need to prepare the top because the hood's in the way. I need to prepare for the hood to be laying over top of the jacket that I'm going to be bringing in. So I'm going to freeze everything again, and then I'm just going to be moving the portions that the hood affects. So it's the front portion of the shirt and then the hood. I'm unfreezing just that. I'm going to simulate that, and then I'm going to lift it up in the air or, you know, above his head again. just so it's out of the way because then I can bring in the jacket to just layer on top because the jacket is much larger. Once that's out of the way, I can go ahead and double check it. Ideally, I'd rather stretch it out a little bit more than if I just kind of left it floating. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in that garment. So add garment, I'm gonna add that jacket. Make sure it's add, not open. And you can see here, my jacket's in the space. Again, I'm gonna make that a much higher layer and then just move it out of the way in my 2D window. If everything else wasn't frozen, this might cause a bit of a collision issue, but everything underneath this jacket is frozen so I can simulate it and it'll pop up over it. Now I do have zippers in place and I do have buttons, so I might have some collision issues, but that's fine because it's easy to just kind of pull them out of each other. So we'll just let that kind of go into place and we'll see what we need to adjust. It does look like the one of the buttons is in the way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the jacket and then probably move these buttons once they get pull, popped out of the way. There we go. And again, I can just kind of pull it to and just let it simulate in place. Let it kind of solve itself and see what I need to get in and move myself. Most of the time, this works perfectly fine. I can see my little um, pocket flaps. They need to be fixed, but that's fine. So I'll turn off simulation and I'm just going to go ahead and fix that real fast. One's all the way inside of this jacket, so I can select them both in the 2D window. If I've got one, I've got both, and then superimpose over. And it looks pretty fine. I think just the hood just needs to end up laying down on top of it next. So I'll go ahead and simulate that again. Now there's much more fabric in the scene than there was earlier, so I just it's gonna be a little bit slower than you anticipate because I do have five particle distance. I do have a lot of top stitching 
and that does uh, take up time for my CPU to calculate, especially with the buttons and the zippers in place. So I can let the hood just kind of fall if I want, but I can also just pull at it and make sure to pull it down if I want. And then now that it's falling down before I actually let it fall over, if it fell over, it would go underneath that collar layer because it was a lower layer than the jacket. So when you're doing stuff like this and something of a lower layer is going to be layered over top, it is best to then at that point remove the layer values. Either way, you're always going to remove the layer values at the end of your project anyway. So now that it's in place, I'm, I'm pretty much happy with how it looks. I definitely need to give it time, simulate it and get him into the pose that I want. But this is pretty much it. We're going to see the final here at the end. Because these are all in place. So let's go ahead, uh, unfreeze everything and put them in a pose. I've just selected the running pose. It'll put them in the air and then it'll bring them all the way back to the ground. I have brought all of my pieces here now down to five particle distance. So it's going to take a while. This is sped up. And now that it is in its pose, let's go ahead and I'm going to render it and we'll be right back. So here is that intro that we saw in the very beginning of the video. I have made this a little bit slower. You can see all the top stitching that we worked on. You can see all of the wrinkles. This is all five particle distance. I have rendered this in V-Ray. I used Clo to render this and to light it. And I did add a little tab at the bottom just of the um, pocket top there just because I liked it. And there we go. Thank you all so much for joining us today.